Hey guys, Sean here. Welcome to the F1 Word. And after weeks of speculation, Red Bull has finally confirmed who will partner Max Verstappen at the team next season. And that is Sergio Perez. Following the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix, Ted Kravitz set the rumour mill into overdrive, claiming Perez was expected to be the team's choice with Albon taking on a reserve role. And that has now been confirmed by Red Bull. So to be clear, the official release from the team states that Sergio Perez will partner Verstappen next year. And his recent run of form and victory at the Sakir Grand Prix made him the favoured choice to join Red Bull initially on a one-year contract. The statement goes on to say that Alex Albon remains an important member of the team and takes on the role of Red Bull test and reserve driver with a key focus on 2022 development, simulator work and tyre testing. Christian Horner went on to emphasise that point on Albon in his quotes and added, quote, having taken our time to evaluate all the relevant data and performances, we have decided that Sergio is the right driver to partner Max for 2021. And Checo says he is ready to give 2021 his full focus in a team that shares his winning mentality. And if you would like to read that full press release, I will link it below in the description. Now, on top of all of that, Alpha Tauri earlier this week confirmed that Yuki Tsunoda will race alongside Pierre Gasly in 2021. But I don't think that announcement came as too much of a surprise to anyone, or at least it shouldn't, given that that has been all but confirmed for a while now. And as if all that wasn't enough, it has also been confirmed today that Toto Wolff will continue as Mercedes CEO and team principal for three more years, and sponsor Ineos has become a one-third equal shareholder in the team. There is also some talk that Lewis Hamilton's contract extension will be announced today as well, but frankly, like the Sonoda news, that's hardly going to be a surprise to anybody. At time of recording, though, there has been no official word, but if it does get announced between now and this video going out, I will post a link in the description and the comments to an article covering the news. So there we have it then. We finally know what is going on at Red Bull driver-wise next year, and I must admit, despite the heads up from chat in the reaction stream on Sunday, this has still really surprised me. I was so sure that Albon was staying, just purely based on the rhetoric coming from the team over the last few weeks. They've been so desperate to give him every opportunity and I felt like they'd give him another year, especially when you throw into that mix Checo saying he was at peace with 2021 and had options for 22. But as surprised as I am, I think it's the right call if we just look at performance. Of course, when it comes to driver lineup decisions, it's never just about performance. If that were the case, then the grid would look very different. But teams have got to consider their own internal politics, sponsorships and even the financial state of a team. All that aside though, Checo is a no-brainer as far as I'm concerned. He has been on the podium twice, including that awesome win at Sakir, and despite missing two races this season, finished in fourth place in the standings, 20 points clear of Albon. Perez's average qualifying position for the season is 7.06, with Albon's at 7.17, and in the races, Checo has an average finish of 5.61, Whereas Albon's average is 7.4. It's clear cut, again, in terms of performance. Although it must be said, as I'm sure many of you will point out, stats don't always tell the full story. Make no mistake, though, as good a driver as Perez is, just because he has performed doesn't mean he will do next year. That Red Bull is geared towards one driver, and that is Max Verstappen. He is, after all, the team leader, and everything is predominantly built around him. So whoever sits in that second car, be it Gasly, Albon, or Perez they'll inevitably be on the back foot and will have to adapt to it, unless, of course, Red Bull suddenly decides to change tack next year, which they won't, of course. Albon has struggled this season, no doubt, and whilst he has to take a massive chunk of the blame, we can't ignore the fact that he has struggled with that car. That's not an excuse, it's a fact, and a fact that Red Bull has even alluded to at times. But it's not just on the car. Like I say, Albon must take responsibility too, but just saying it's one or the other is not fair. I actually think this whole thing might work out well for Albon. I know not being on the grid for a season can be a little bit risky. You've got to keep yourself in the forefront of people's minds, if that makes sense. But as I said on Sunday, it's a chance for him to step out of that pressure cooker that is Red Bull. And as a reserve, watch and learn from a driver of Perez's experience. Perhaps even learn how to adapt to a car that may not suit his style. What it also does is it gives Red Bull options should Sonoda struggle at AlphaTauri, or dare I say, even if Checo struggles it gives them that option of being able to swap things around again, as we all know they seem to love to do. For some reason, I do believe Gasly will be picked up by Renault for 2022. Don't ask me why, it is totally just a gut feeling. So if Albon does do the job he needs to as a reserve and Perez really excels at Red Bull, there could be a route back to the grid with Alpha Tauri next year. I mean, we'll see, and to be fair, that's a bit far off right now. I guess to summarise all of my 
reaction, ramblings, whatever you want to call them. I do feel a bit for Albon, but nobody can say Red Bull didn't give him more of a chance than they have with drivers previously. Remember, Gasly only got 12 races, Albon was given 26. Don't get me wrong, that's not a lot, but it's more than double what Gasly got. I will reiterate my usual line at this point. I still feel Albon showed more potential at times to turn things around than Gazzy did when he was with the main team. But again, based solely on performance in 2020, I believe this is the right call from Red Bull, especially if the team genuinely wants to try and take the fight to Mercedes next year. There are no guarantees, of course. As I say, Checo could struggle. But that's still all speculation at this point. We'll have to see how things go next year. But I do hope this isn't the last we see of Albon in Formula 1. Anyway, enough waffle. They are just my thoughts or I suppose reactions to the news. But what do you guys think? Do you agree that this is the right move from Red Bull or do you perhaps feel Albon should have been given another season? That is it for this video though. Like I say, as ever with breaking news, it's just a reaction and a waffle. And on the subject of waffles, I will be back a little bit later this week with another of my end of season team, well, waffles. Just a few of my thoughts on how I think each team has performed in 2020. In the meantime, though, don't forget that you can, of course, follow me over on social media and all of the links you need for that are in the description down below. But as ever, thank you for watching. I've been Sean. This has been the F1 Word. And until next time, goodbye.